the guys and girls ladies yeah yeah, yeah. okay when have you crossed yeah, many. 30 yeah it doesn't matter uh, even if there's few people or no no not that way like over, uh, i think yeah, i think yeah, we so, yeah. we don't yeah. want to delay too much also yeah uh, got it okay so, yeah, so whenever maybe, uh, uh, what will so 15 20 minutes we'll take for the slides and and then uh, anand then should be keep me honest if i'm going over i tend to speak uh, a lot so anand has seen that in the past so let's try to stick to that uh, 20 and then feel free to ask make it interactive so and so that way that guys, will be the most helpful yeah guys uh, i yeah. request to keep the videos on man this is not fair yeah uh, no they are all working and saying okay let's i'm here for entertainment value what will you get <laughs> right so <laughs> yeah uh, the first thing i will i'll say is uh, as any good uh, vc uh, i wanted to create the slide and went to my analyst and said can you help me right so <laughs> most of you probably know much better than me how to do market sizing right so i'm learning so we'll keep this interactive i'm going to highlight more of what what all maybe stuff i've got wrong than right so that way you learn from that so in directionally you could the important thing in vc is to be directionally right right catching the right uh, wave or the right uh, wind right so that's the more important one so with that i'll jump in and feel free to stop me and ask questions i like it that way and it'll be more helpful for all of us if i'm not uh, something i'm talking about is not clear also please uh, make it so it's 10 past so i'll try to wrap this by 5:30 5:35 anand is that okay yes, yes, and anand uh, you feel you, you kind of moderate this also anywhere feel free to pitch in Absolutely. because yeah because your perspective normally tends to be uh, quite on the uh, d- very different from mine so that helps right so me yeah, yeah. also both ways Absolutely. Right? so yeah, yeah, yeah. okay the first so thing we obviously have a common deal on <laughs> <laughs> not at all no no we'll fix that we'll fix that <laughs> the, the opposites is actually good see the good thing about maybe just structure and axel is there are nine partners and none of us think alike right yeah, so yeah, that is probably the uh, most important <laughs> reason uh, that uh, like the few, no, I'm, I'm, many I'm investments glad that, yeah i'm yeah. i'm glad yeah. i converted subrat finally so <laughs> yeah yeah oh we are co investors in something uh, yeah 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 we have a we have yeah. a dump sheet on awesome awesome cool yeah. we know we'll do more together <laughs> so uh, so done. for example subrat so if he will tell you if he was in this presentation he'll say all market raising is bullshit right he'll just say it that way right he doesn't believe so like whereas i'm on the other extreme so you got like or or i think tam or market is super important to get right right so uh, obviously the team and ta- market are the two most important things i'm sure all of you uh, heard this a number of times right so um, i not like I, it's not that i don't like looking at teams the or, or the quality of the team is very important uh, and i don't want to digress into that but what i realized is uh, markets getting the direct directionality of markets right is super important and and uh, whether you're a 100 million fund or a like or a 10 million like maybe if you're an angel it's different but if you're a organized fund let's say whatever million 50 500 million or above you want to catch that one outstanding company that really can make your fund right so that's what the whole vc industry is made by or outliers and in these outliers uh, generally tend to happen where there are large market opportunities it could be something as big as i want to get uh, millions of eyeballs which is what a facebook can uh, start out right so we'll get it didn't start out that way i'm saying uh, or google like so they didn't have when they started out not too much about the market sizing and all wouldn't have been done so that is subrutos point so if we did market sizing of college kids we uh, actually would have invested in the, like the series a in the face, facebook right or or i'm sure who did the uh, google first round wouldn't have done or how right so all as much as we are going to look at market sizing i'm please have that in mind right that's why anand your investment chat chat very early days uh, hats off to you on that because that was again a leap of faith saying that if you can get the next few hundred million people using a product on a regular basis we'll figure out the business model down the road correct tanand is there any other yeah, reason we, we lucked that? out also yeah. both yeah <laughs> we also lucked True, out but uh, lucked out and great guy like because i uh, no. the first time i met the team right so sorry the team was brilliant no, Sorry, think, go ahead anand. Yeah, yeah also anand i think the the thing is that it's still it's still a small market if you look at the ad dollars right 
so, so yeah, there are some yeah. problems where you know one part of the market will run much faster and as per your expectation whereas another part will not catch up right? so yeah so maybe maybe subrat is right you know that uh, yeah. yeah i mean you 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 probably will find a great team and a great uh, this thing and revenues may or may not be around right yeah so and then you'll have to be patient the other thing in our yeah. early stages it takes <laughs> yeah. time right yeah. so yeah. even the best of the success stories it takes a long 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 time yeah. to uh, you know build right uh, anand thanks IPA for putting is... the context here the context is yeah. that yeah it is important to have billion dollar outcomes yeah okay. given the fund size i think the good part is that we covered this part uh, thanks to prayank and uh, ritesh uh, okay. this session and last session where they said okay. this is the math and if you have any fund more than 50 million dollars you need a unicorn to sort of return a 3 4x multiple of the fund right awesome so we covered this oh so prank already context, joined is it why awesome. why a billion yeah. dollar outcome is important got it cool so and then uh, what, what billion dollar means is different right? it could be 25 times pat or 10 times revenue or whatever so the size of the opportunity uh, uh, is is extremely important to achieve that with a reasonable market share right so you can't say the market is 100 million and i'll get uh, out to 120 million i'll get 90% so 100 million yeah. so because the other thing i've realized is uh, like the more you the, from investing over a period of time it's also about fundraising and and over a period of time and then it's always a uh, like it's there's always something next phase right uh, girish says it well so entrepreneurs can dream in compartments like so initially when you start out you want to be a 100 million company in 100 million you want to be a billion dollar company and when you were a billion dollar company you want to make it maybe 5 billion 10 billion right so uh, you compartmentalize uh, like girish mathapudam from freshworks is talked about it multiple right. times like dream in compartments but uh, the reason i'm i still think it's important to get the directionality right is is that in a in a like forget online offline how much of the market is today online this nuances is not as important as saying uh, okay like we'll go into the actual text uh, one of the cases i wanted to talk about is swiggy right so simple thing is to say like there are everyone all of us eat three times a day at least or, or most of us sorry some might not and then it's a pretty large market like how do we go size that and can you build a large company there right was the fundamental thesis right we spent a ton of time uh, looking at a, uh, companies in that space then we did the market sizing and i'm going to tell you show it here and i want us to poke holes here right on on the market sizing right so um we got the directionality right saying that this is going to be a large market but i would say i was off by a big uh, number in estimating this market but uh, like when we invested originally right so this is from the original investment day and i was saying really we we thought all this right so what why point to look at it for a uh, like 30 seconds and i love for you to start poking holes here what are all the mistakes you see right so and feel free to poke holes that that's a whole idea right only then you'll learn go for it guys yeah who is ready so this was this memo was done in late 14 early 15 right when we actually late 14 is when we did the memo anyone yeah so i can uh, you know i can take a shot here who's that um, uh, and, and who's that and maybe just say your name and just go for, for yeah which hi, hi, for, is, uh, for me to get to know you is, yes yeah this is jeff me uh hi so hi hi uh so i think uh, the base here is a percentage of the total market right we've taken the total delivery market but in network effect businesses there's a lot of uh, real option value as well which helps companies expand tam as they scale uh so probably uh, you know if things are going right it leads to a lot of uh, expansion to adjacent markets and that's why you bet on the team as well um, on great founders who have that ability to expand to adjacent markets so naturally the market share of uh, you end up taking a, a base market share of a larger pie uh, sorry your point is that the base of food itself expands or uh, so we expanding into instamart and other areas what both, is your point uh, both, both right network effects uh, leading to yeah. more 
giving access to uh, more people uh, who could uh, you know then again sort of uh, um, basically making this more accessible and also then using networks to expand to other um, adjacent markets so uh, both good point out. yeah so jay one point i want to make is when initial investments uh, at least when i make i look for the original market to be reasonable enough to build a sizable company right. because the network effects and adjacencies and all if it's needed to build a sizable company uh, i i i tend to be a little bit more hesitant because the core needs to be strong enough and then you can always become larger right so yeah. here in this particular case you know, the point you're making is right there were adjacencies but we didn't weren't even thinking in fact bundle which is the original company that uh, harsha had found uh, harsha and uh, nandan had found was uh, was broader than just food it was uh, e-commerce delivery right yeah. and they narrowed it down to food and started here intentionally right mainly because they wanted to focus and and solve a consumer problem very deeply in this space so the first thing i would say uh, say is that 50000 outlets listed on zomato we started from that right i would take almost every line item and i would say that uh, uh, is is wrong right every, so I, mean, is, I think i think apart from the delivery order size everything is yeah. underestimated and the delivery order size Even is delivery first. order size is uh, overestimated yeah correct correct yeah that yeah. is overestimated that is underestimated yeah <laughs> correct 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 so, absolutely yeah, but but it's like too small, right i mean the number of outlets should be probably in lakhs the orders are definitely more than 200 a day easily and it can be right comfortably i mean it should be a sizable portion of the thing yeah i mean 20% order for my delivery anyways like not required right so we actually do just deliveries and uh, they they in fact interesting part is that you know uh, this uh, it doesn't look at the expansion of of uh, Like the number of outlets listed and cloud kitchens and all, it just just leaves out all of those options, right? Cloud kitchens wasn't even a concept at that time. I know it wasn't. Right, so. It wasn't. Yeah. But uh, I would have done. This is like a good bottoms up. I would have put a top top down also here, saying top that these down. are people who can't afford a maid, who have to eat out. You know, they're living yeah. the bachelors, and and this is a number. And maybe yeah. maybe you know, and then probably this thirteen percent growth itself is too small, right? Once you look at how many people actually have to eat out. Yeah. So, probably given both so i think this is this may be one good option like like uh, like bottoms up but top down would have given a better picture of direction i would say excellent excellent anand so yeah uh, so uh, every so just to set context this 2014 swiggy was doing less than 100 150 or i don't remember the exact only in koramangla right and what uh, our team did at that time was This, uh, like fifty thousand outlets was correct. That that's what in Zomato it was at that time, right? We said only those Zomato wasn't even a competitor at that time, right? So it was doing uh, restaurants uh, reviews, right? It was the Yelp model. Uh, they weren't even sending Food Panda. There were like ten other companies, but none, uh, Zomato wasn't one of them. That's why it's uh, listed here, right? First of all, the company when they pitch didn't even have a market size slide. surprise like they didn't even say this is the tam or anything like that they just talked about the problem how they're going to solve it this is our version of it and every one of these were calls done and verified right so how many like call five restaurants and say how many orders are you doing per day or like uh, some work was done so it was not like roughly let's pick some numbers in spite of that when we look back almost every one of these seems uh, silly and most of this is underestimated and the average delivery order koramangla could have been different but if you look at india it's very different right so the many many errors were done but in spite of that it came up with a 700 million market and then which even with conservative 13% year on year 13% was because that's how it was growing in the past few years they again took some data from the reports so all these were good uh, we had picked rather not they we had picked so all this were I, i thought okay i'm doing smart market sizing and and everything right with the help of a very good analyst at that time but as anand correctly pointed out almost everything was underestimated except the uh, delivery order size but directionally it was the market still going going to be a billion plus market where you could build a reasonable size company so the bigger point here is as long as the core has enough space and then with even conservative estimates Uh, to Anand's point, bottoms up tends to be conservative. If there's enough room, bigger room to build a sizable company, right? 
then it can always grow into a much bigger no, one, which is what I agree. Yeah. To the extent Good. that yeah. seven thirty million is a lot of revenue, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. This exercise didn't didn't uh, make you go wrong, right? I mean, it is good. Seven thirty plus growing probably will will become one and a half billion in uh, five six years. That's a large yeah. market, so you got it yeah. right to that extent. You probably underestimated it. Probably the market is five billion dollars today, or yeah, and you know, five billion dollars. But but you underestimated to that extent. But I, I would say by a factor of three. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's okay to underestimate and still have a good market yeah. versus I, overestimate and have a. Yeah. I, I'll tell you good, good. where I have gone wrong. Okay, and I have done yeah. this seriously too many times. I don't know if if Excel has gone through this. I would say that okay, because this is the market, I need to own 25% of the company or 25% of the company. Okay, and and 20 was my number. What I realized is that we are consistently underestimating market sizes and hence the outcomes that will happen in India. We sort of stop everything at a billion. We don't think beyond a billion, right? And if we're consistently underestimating, then probably you know we we know that we're underestimating. We don't need to have like a 20% uh, minimum ownership criteria and all. A lot of good companies where even if you own 12 or 10 or nine and a half or 11 and a half doesn't matter. It's still a good company because the market probably is much larger than what we what it seems today, right? And and there I feel that you know we we made a few wrong stupid decisions simply thinking that. You know, small market, so we need to have a large ownership. Hmm, that's a. I've never thought of that that way. That's a good point. Yeah, it's a good, very valid point. In fact, I, maybe I'm related now... to that, the other thing to think through, maybe, but the counter to that, Anand, is consumer companies. This is a maybe a lesser known fact. The efficiency ratio is uh, yeah, I agree. Cap to capital raise is uh, one is to three. If you Right? Not India. not a question of per India. I don't know about outside, but no. when we looked at the top thirty companies or whatever, and we we just uh, did a quick analysis, it's two point seven is to one, right? Yeah. So for every billion dollars, you need uh, two seventy million raised. Yeah. So from that point of view, I'll make the argument: your push to own more, right, is an intuitively good call, right? But it's just oh, that, I agree. Uh, yeah, right. So it's it's all. But the flips actually, what I look for if you're talking about funding. Is can you build a consortium that can help you raise that kind of capital in consumer? If you're doing consumer investments, yeah. can we keep? You'll have to keep raising capital to build a sizable company. Yes, uh, Swiggy, and then the food market is much larger, but the amount of capital that has gone in to create that market and educate the consumer and feed a lot of mouths is also a lot. Yeah, right. the, so, the point yeah. is that probably going forward, we'll all do math on a two to five billion dollar outcome, not a one billion dollar outcome. That's what I'm trying to say. True, but, but Anand, I found it tough to try and only go for those. Then no, we no, I invest in no, a lot of companies, right? So I am saying yeah. ownership. I go by those that. Yeah. But company yeah. Has, one billion, I am good enough, right? I mean, I don't want to lose out because it's one billion a, is happy for me. Same year. Very right? happy. So, extremely yeah. happy. I, I, yeah. I probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still as a base case, right? If the market is much more, let's like food. How many people eat? How big? Those are all I, what I would call it, quantify. Even share chat. As uh, once things hit, it could be uncapped market, right? Yeah. Those are beautiful. But a base case of can you build? Can you yeah. look yourself in the mirror? Look, can I look myself in the mirror and say this can be at least a hundred million yeah. revenue company? To yeah. or a twenty-five times span, can it be a fifty billion? Uh, sorry, one billion dollar mark uh, company is the base case. And to do that, this conservative uh, estimate helps you directionally. Yes. Right. To your point, there are three ways of doing this. Right. Top down. Which tends to be more optimistic. We'll go through a quick exercise as well. So I was just looking at the time. Then bottoms up is just what we just saw, right? And substitutes. If you do between these through and triangulate and come up with a, a way to build a company that they generates 25 million of EBITDA, right? Then you have a clear shot at a billion dollar company. And ideally, to Anand's point, these end up becoming two billion, five billion, or much bigger. So don't miss out on good companies just because of two, three percentage ownership points. Is the other point that Anand made, which is the valid one. I would, I would, uh, if it's a like the we we tell people if it's a rocket ship, don't ask which seat. It's a similar thing holding for us. Right? So, yeah. So uh, that is the. We'll come back to the exercise in a in a minute. Before that, uh, TAM is just one aspect of the market uh, to look at. These are the other general things I'm sure you others have touched upon also. Is it a shrinking or growing market, right? So food was a growing market. Uh, though the growth rate we estimated was 13% based on restaurants growth, 
right? How it's happening and all that. The real way to look at it is there was a mobile convergence. People are getting con very con uh, comfortable ordering, uh, doing things online. And, and it's a busy world. Everyone's less time to go out and eat. And, and also traffic's getting worse by the, by that day, used to at least, not during COVID times. So all those trends made it a growing market. What pace, uh, try to estimate it as much as possible. If you look at proxies, right? Uh, if I had done the same sizing now, I would have looked at a bunch of other proxies to see what's the growth rate, right? Any underlying macro industry trends that makes it more interesting, and then touch upon cloud kitchens and other things that have become more and more prevalent. Right, so maybe if we had looked broader, we would have found other underlying trends that make it more interesting. I'm sticking with the same uh, food example. And then the second aspect of market is really knowing the customer and having unique insights. Uh, obviously, you could, you could look at it as the product and other things, but it's a very integral part of understanding the market, uh, for me at least. So really knowing this well and the purchasing behaviors and all that to be able to get better and better, sharper, on what people will pay, will the business models work? Because there, your TAM is greatly dis dependent on the business model. And depending on whether it's consumer or SaaS or FinTech or B2B, the business models widely vary. So you'll have to really understand the customer segment um, and, and back into your market size from that also. So um, example, like uh, let's say I have a company called SenseHQ, which, uh, which is a contingent staffing SaaS company, right? They uh, provide software to con contingent staffing companies across the globe. And these companies, some of them, Adeco, Randstad, and all, are tens of billions of dollars in revenue. So it's easy to say, okay, these large revenue companies will give me $10 million of revenue, ARR, uh, annual reckoning revenue, as a SaaS company. But in reality, you have to understand who the customers are. When we went and looked at the balance sheet or, or the PL profiles, of these publicly listed potential customers, we saw that their IT spends were in the one, two percent range, right? So you'll have to really understand, and then we size the market using that information as well to say that what is the real spend in, te in technology and how much of that could come to a company like Sense. So uh, I'm just giving you a second order example here because, uh, and in a completely different industry. So each and every industry really understand the customer, uh, segment as well as maybe the industry structure where does where do you fit in the value chain how much of the in a marketplace at least how much can the take rate really be give for that you need to really understand your customer uh, and and what their uh, profiles are so in the case of let's go back to food right food you left to really understand the restaurant business like the customer is not only the consumer but understand the restaurant business and say how much can you really take was also, if I were to do it again, I would spend a lot of time understanding that. We did a little bit, but I'm tying back to industries there. So that's the customer segment portion. And finally, this we tend to not spend too much time, but becomes super important and definitely in consumer companies or network effect businesses or marketplaces where winner takes most, right? It's it's an important one to really pay attention to. And, and obviously, uh, the more competitive the market, the more capital intense it tends to get as well. And uh, fortunately, or or, more, or unfortunately, many of the companies I've invested in, that has always been some, or, or Axel has invested in, that have been well-funded uh, competitors, which makes it a lot more, uh, you'll have to be, build your balance sheet much more strongly to fight those competition. So uh, happy to take questions on any of this. So this is more other aspects to think about, uh, not not uh, not normally thought about when you think about the market, but these I would say is as almost as important as getting the TAM uh, directionally right. Yeah. 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 Any questions? Don't worry. No question is uh, dumb, or if you disagree, also that's good, right? So. No. Okay. okay. So uh, these are some biases, which I'm sure you have heard when, uh, when uh, some founders pitch or we ourselves are given to it also, especially the bandwagon bias. This space is large, a lot of companies are getting funded. Let's go fund it, right? Those normally don't work out, right? So especially for seed investors, I found that if it's a hot space, you have probably missed the wagon or the bandwagon already. So. These are some of the biases that I've seen while looking at markets or even companies. 
love to hear any other biases that uh, you have seen common I am from rahul the side yeah yes, I mean, rahul. on in in this sheet i think you can add tons right like people talking only about gmbs you know and so on uh, but i i actually rather wanted to ask you a question uh, sure. there, are, there are a few um, you know spaces where finding data may be difficult for example you know uh, if i'm trying to map out each and every ott in the southeast asia region right i mean i'm i'm, I'm i faced this challenge recently right so the digits probably on on certain tools like traction may actually differ by multiple of multiples uh, to the reality right like tons of them are not mapped right because some of them uh, i'm more, more like uh, you know probably soft porn you know otts and a lot of them are not tracked right uh, any tips pointers to figure out you know any other methodology to figure out um, you know things like this yeah depends this particular industry i'm not very familiar with rahul so i can't comment on this particular one but what i've normally found is uh, like the methodology that i was telling you if you start from um, like mapping out the industry structure broadly you'll get a decent sense right of of what can like in the offline world most most of the companies that at least we look at at axel is tech disrupting a in offline business already happening so in those kind of businesses it's it's easy to go and try and get not easy you can go and get data around the offline world and then apply your judgment so it's it's a judgment call we talked about the top down bottom up and, and substitute in your case rahul like is there any substitute way of estimating might be a uh, sharper way maybe give me the example and then maybe let's brainstorm as a group on how we uh, like the, the others in the group or including myself would have solved that so in your case give me the example again well i was just trying to research that how how do smaller otts buy uh, content and hence i wanted to market size the total uh, otts across southeast asia you know that's that was a very simple exercise i was essentially trying to do and now you want to know how much money ott spend on content buying no no anand i was just trying to figure out how do smaller otts buy content like assume how does a hoi choi would buy content i i know for example hoi choi is a bengali content ott right mm -hmm. but essentially the issue majority of otts face smaller otts except the big five right is that they don't have enough libraries of content they they have only very limited set of content so assuming i'm a you know i i speak bengali i want to watch bengali content i download hoi choi i would end up the entire library in prop if i'm a super user i would essentially end up the library in a month and then what right so another 11 months i don't have anything to watch yeah, yeah. so so yeah i was i mean i was just trying to figure out you know how do you how do i license a content because for a hoi choi or x or y is not possible to go to a sony or a fox and do a deal because you can't as simple as that they, they won't talk right 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 so the way i would have and done this rahul is like if we can take a shot i would probably just say okay find out how much is the percentage of the revenues does netflix spend on on their content purchase public data you probably get uh, similar data from a few other otts which are public i mean in some other countries also i think uh, in japan there are a few otts which are public and uh, then it's difficult to estimate uh, how many small otts are there in india but or or south asia you just estimate the total market size of how much people will pay maybe 2 3 4 dollars a month kind of subscription and then to take take that percentage uh, i would have done that kind of a thing okay i mean forgive me but uh, i don't know i mean i that that would maybe that would look like a swiggy slide you know probably a few years later yeah 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 it should it should look like a swiggy slide because i get the extent ki whether it is a billion dollar market or is a 100 million dollar market right there will be a good starting point i can refine it but i want to get a quick and dirty handle of you know because see the problem is that for for early stage investors particularly you don't like have a few months of research or whatever right you, you usually deciding during the meeting or maybe after the meeting you have a few days to decide whether i'm spending more time or not so i would have done a back of the envelope if, yeah. if netflix is spending like so there was a slide i saw somewhere with netflix etc etc everybody is spending like 10 20 billion dollars of money every year on content now all the ridges put together okay? true that 
No, I a lot of it is their own original original content also, right? Original so, content, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Original yeah. content is like about ten billion dollars spent on original content now. Okay. So, so I would say that okay, maybe a fraction of that will probably spend in Southeast Asia by the small OTTs, right? Except that then it's a question of penetration call, right? I mean, how much will Netflix itself come here to India, and how much will be the local players, right? Yeah. I think getting the first order like to the more important thing is uh, first uh, like the are you getting in the right ballpark is the more important one right and so actually, is this you know, an industry what, rahul yeah, the yeah. more important thing that uh, anand said that it's not just about the size it's about the direction and uh, what are the underlying forces right true so 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 and the nature of the market right if it's a winner day call market then naturally you first of all you don't even have a room for a marketplace for content right because hmm. it's a winner day call market right? the winner will decide and then the other player is relevant and are there other forces like you know will this expand and take money from tv or let me put it the other way around what is the market for tv production right how much do the tv channels put I assume ki all of that will move to ott right so i would probably look at the underlying forces also and directions not just the market the the accuracy of the market size is not important but i would say getting the direction right is as important maybe more important in some cases as long as you are sure ki okay this is not a tiny market right you want to recover a tiny market agree Like a un, sub 500 million would be a tiny market, but anything more you are okay. I mean, you then then look at other factors. Okay, in 10 years, what changes, positive changes can happen to this market? Right. So I'll I'll just bring like share chat because uh, uh, mentioned the logic was that you know today nobody has broadband, but the question is, do people aspire to do broadband or not? Right, and that was very clear. We got that call right. I, I'll give another thing. In fact, I wanted to add one thing here. Anand is biased, right? bias on adoption so a founder has a bias where he says everybody will adopt my software and the vc is saying nobody will adopt right i mean the vc will say you know india is different nobody will adopt founder is like you know oh everybody is adopting okay. so, so 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 i feel that you know this penetration bias maybe it's a market size thing but founders are too optimistic on saying ki everybody will buy the problem is that you know people you can reach out to them you can convert them But people still just don't buy. I mean, it's just like that. I don't buy. Right? I mean, I, I don't buy. It's just uh, maybe in a thing like Swiggy and all becomes so ubiquitous that everybody adopts. But maybe in, in a thing like Carbon Clap, it will be a long haul of reaching lot of penetration. Right? People will. It's a great business, but people may not have like lot of high penetration. People will have a behavior of calling somebody on the phone call and all that. Uh, that I, I feel like you know uh, because because size. multiplied by adoption will be your actual addressable yeah anand have you covered that or or is it like uh, sorry uh, what's the question i'm yeah. saying the adoption maybe bias. we'll do this one quick uh, yeah so we'll do a quick mark uh, like a uh, use case and then come back to this right so yeah, the, sure, the sure. and then we we'll yeah, see yeah. if we yeah. missed right so and then we'll be done with the slide so then we i want to discuss this more in depth Perfect. right so rahul we'll come back to your question also i have some thoughts right so um yeah so this is a case study of bounce right so this is from 2018 right so some of you might have used bounce it's a two wheeler uh, rental solution right so you can pick it up anywhere drop it off anywhere right so we did the three three methods we talked about right so the first one is a top down spend based analysis right to talk start with how much do indian spend on commute i'll let you read through it for a second and came up with a 6 billion market on this any questions on this not i'll flip to the next one oh okay right next one was more a bottoms up what are the various in the top 7 cities we were able to get data right so on how each of the modes of commute how many people are riding and what percentage of that is addressable so uh, this is more an estimate and then how many what does that convert to in a daily rides and applying a dollar value to that it's mentioned that i suppose it's 75 cents or some some number yeah it's there at at, at the top hmm. right to come up with a market size and this end out ended up being the midpoint of that is a 2 billion market so we remember we said bottoms up is conservative same with the swiggy one right and then the last one was substitutes how do the same set of commuters what do they do today some could be using ola and uber right 
and and if so some of, like how do you use that to come up with a size right this is the third way using substitute this, this is an easy case that hopefully all of us are able to relate to and then you look at all three and say okay there's a range here so minimum like uh, we, we we established already that can you build at least a billion uh, plus right so use case right in this case it's a 3 billion use case and and i i would think if things work out this again might end up being conservative or uh, like but is there enough wiggle room to get larger than that um, obviously today uh, like not too many people are commuting and all that but uh, like covid no one would have anticipated but in a non covid world this this company was scaling much faster than a uh, like like I, i was involved with taxi for sure that's why the ola example before right uh, uh, that the way that was scaling or or how swiggy was scaling in a equivalent time bounce was scaling much faster right in terms of the rides per day uh, till covid hit right uh, so the, the so this multiple ways of triangulating on the on the same market and coming up with a number that at the end of the day you uh, you are working with someone and making a recommendation you need to be comfortable given the the fund structure will this provide enough flexibility to re- create an outcome that can be impactful to that fund is a fundamental question right that we are trying to answer and market shouldn't be a criteria for limiting that then you go into the team product and the rest of the stuff um i think that's about the exact uh, slides i had um as we were thinking the other things that i'm not sure if it's very obvious but the market structure is equally as important right when you talk about ott or content or any 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 place where it's a marketplace uh, kind of a struck uh, setup i worked with a bunch of marketplaces so how concentrated is the supply and the demand uh, is an important factor to consider and then the economics on both sides right so um, what example can i give you maybe let's take an example from a different industry i worked with a company called black puck which is an in intercity trucking right if you look on one side it's trucks there are millions of trucks this is long haul trucks going between cities uh, as on one side and and uh, that whole industry when we invested that was a 60 70 billion dollar industry right so uh, like a lot of uh, in india a lot of the goods are moved by a road as you know and because of that it's a very large industry so then the on the on the if you call that the supply of trucks it was that it was highly fragmented you can think of it almost equivalent of an ola uh, or a taxi for sure we had just exited to ola when we made this investment uh, that investment i was in fact intentionally looking for similar models hey did we lose anand Yep, yeah. the last ten seconds. Yeah, and then figuring out hey, Anand. how. Anand, we just lost yeah. you for the last ten seconds. Hey, sorry. Yeah, I'll, re- I'll repeat. I was saying really understanding the supply in this case in of Black Park, how fragmented uh, fragmented supply in marketplaces goes without saying. The more fragmented the supply and demand is, the higher higher power for the platform. So I like platforms where both supply and demand are fragmented at a very high level. Supply of trucks. which is owned by truck owners own between 3 to 5 trucks is a very fragmented supply on the demand side like probably 50% of the demand it comes from the large companies and 50% is medium to small uh, it's not it wasn't as uh, distributed as i would have liked it but still it was a reasonably good uh, fragmentation of demand as well and then it was more a question of understanding the value chain and seeing how much of value can be captured across this whole value chain and and making an estimate of that market right so um you could do a similar thing when you're looking at content ott whatever you're look talking about rahul is there a different way of looking at this whole thing in supply demand and and figuring out the or uh, this can be applied anywhere right at the end of the day there's supply there's demand and there's a value structure and you have to be realistic about how much can you really capture from the if if you're taking money it's most most likely in this case it was from the supply right how much can you take right so um, so all those things are important to really understand and and then then uh, then 
there are in the marketplace you can also be very transparent marketplace where you expose the rate card and say that this is the rate and i'm going to take 20 percent of that or it could be a not very uh, like i would say a closed marketplace where the prices are not necessarily published then you kind of make the market moving price so marketplace itself we could do a separate seminar on that or a, or a workshop around that but we i could, just want to give you a flavor yeah, of, uh, just of a different yeah <laughs> no 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 <laughs> yeah, good. yeah i'll stop now i think this is all the slide we had we went slightly over on and i hope that's okay but it's Perfect. interactive which is no, no, good. this is very yeah. useful anand just yeah. one question on this tam triangulation right here yeah. would you would you say that this is a winner take all market like a network effects market with winner take all dynamics would you like try to judge as to how much of this market will the number one number two player take yeah in general it's a good if it's a marketplace where there's a supply and demand coming coming together in your marketplace it's an important one to understand and and is it going to like invariably if it's a uh, like if if there are network effects right and 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 uh, it's going to be tough to disrupt that market leader right uh, you could have network effects but with money capital people could disrupt that also that's always something to watch out for especially yeah. on the consumer side right yeah. um, it's important to understand that and and obviously it goes without saying the market leader gets a premium invariably doesn't mean you ca you can't still build a sizable company being the number two player right and and still uh, like not uh, you might not be able to point out too many cases but if you look at uber and lyft lyft is still a reasonably sized company right uh, uh, from an indian vc perspective right or you can take if you look at uh, food for example there are multiple Place in India or and also across the globe, right? These are all marketplaces. So um, and and same with uh, let's say e-commerce. JD is is is, uh, is JD versus Ali Ali's company, yeah. right? So in China, so you can look across the globe. Um, it is an important thing to consider. Ideally, if you can be the market leader, that's great. Uh, that's what most VCs and most most of you want to go for. But sometimes uh, it's out of your hand. So. uh but in the last thing i would add on that front is it will normally boil down to one or two players uh, eventually and uh, i mean i can't even think of too many where there's more than two or three max right and then the value capture would be one will get the most and then the two to the next and the third is very is much smaller does it answer your question anand yeah does yeah, yeah perfectly yeah okay now what's the plan we uh, uh anand i think it's just just open to question and answers we've been all, almost sure. having a panel discussion here so it's better sure. that yeah uh, i have a question yeah guys shubham our capital sorry shubham hi anand shubham shubham go ahead yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so not exactly a market sizing question but um, just wanted to understand your uh, your thesis going in when you guys invested in bounds and uh, specifically around the question of the dockless or this docks model in a country like india and how did you guys exactly tackle that uh, challenge of the redeployment cost etc associated with the dockless model yeah so dockless model has uh, for for those who are not uh, too familiar with the model is uh, right uh, shubham is referring to bikes being picked up from anywhere and dropped off anywhere versus being picked up only in specific places and dropped off in specific places Uh, the thesis was if you can build something robust in a dockless way, and uh, at least in the early like early days, we wanted to test it out with a few number of bikes, right? Uh, and build the IoT and the technology to track it closely, and do it do it well. If you can make that work, and and uh, the rebalancing cost that Shubham you referred to, we estimated some cost. If you can keep it within that, as long as utilization is much higher with this model. we wanted to try it utilization should be high damage and theft and other things should be reasonably low with with those criteria dockless is a much more consumer love product that consumers can pick up anywhere and drop off anywhere versus a dock which might be better from a company perspective but for consumers they'll have to walk that extra 100 200 meters whatever so it, we took a consumer first approach and tried that and uh, yeah so that's how we took and we did a i would say a seed but it was a series a not much was proven iot was only after that built and it took some amount of time to build that as well 
So it took some time to get get that uh, to a decent state. Got it. Right. So it was more from consumer side, uh, Shubham. Understood. Thanks a lot. So till let's stick to that, na. Just maybe Swiggy. Consumer side was always the like, consum consumer companies. If they take the consumer side, I'm I'm a big fan of that. And see how to solve their own internal problems. Delivery is expensive business, right? Very low margin. So getting into that uh, for the longest time, no one else wanted to do it because of that, right? So, but Asha and team said, no, this we want to solve this consumer problem. We'll have to figure out how to make money, right? And then eventually they figure that out as well. So it uh, that's what makes a consumer focused entrepreneur like as we are looking for it uh, special. But that all, that's also the reason why. No, it's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good point about you know Swiggy not charging delivery charges and eventually being able to load on delivery charges and all of that, right? I mean, a few other charges. Uh, that's a big thing. I think even their margins from the restaurants also improved over time, right? I mean, that was a leap of faith, saying that if we own the customer and consumer and, and they are happy and they are sticking coming to us, these things we can solve later on. Right? That's a very mm -hmm. very good example. I think I think uh, here again, the larger market or the total market size is important, and how to make money and how much cut will you make eventually is it possible today? That probably you you may want to give some credibility to say, saying eventually we will be able able to do that, versus versus trying to say okay can I solve for that also? Right? I think market yeah, sizing. That's a good point. Good point. Yeah. You can't say that way. It's like no. same thing. I'm sure for black box also, right? I mean, like not a very high margin because you know take rate may not be very high. It's it's a thin margin business. Yeah. Right? But uh, but that doesn't mean it can't be solved eventually. It can be solved eventually. No, when the margins are lower, you have to look for larger market opportunities. Yeah. Right. So once you disrupt, like even if you make any B two B business, I'll say is like by general general rule of thumb is less than ten percent take rate. If someone saying I'll make much larger than ten percent, it's going to be tougher. I'm talking yeah. about marketplaces, right? On a consumer front, it'll be fifteen to twenty, right? So, uh, and with that, your unit level economics, which is again a topic by itself, is an important one to really understand. But you can't solve for it to Anand's point. If you want the seed stage company to go and solve unit economics, they're not going to get PMF also. Yeah. Right? So yeah. get PMF and then get notionally where the unit economics will land no, and it might take a few years to get there. It's a very yeah. good point. And I, I don't know how, but you guys would have some pressure in the boardroom about, you know, we have to fix the margins in Swiggy and we have to charge more and all of that. And uh, I mean, they, they probably held on for a very long time and suddenly when they had the, let's say the market share or the size and the critical mass, they probably turned on the number, right? I mean, I, I remember very distinctively when 25 rupees was added a delivery charge, right? It was like a Probably the first company in India to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's more the founder again. If founders have the conviction, they have to yeah. drive, right? So if you're like in this. No, because they right? added delivery charge yeah. before even Amazon, Flipkart, anybody could even dare to do that, right? I mean, they, they were the first ones to add. Yeah. But they had to be patient till then. <laughs> it's yeah. Always important. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, two more questions. Akshat here, if I can ask a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, so my quick question around market sizing is, you know, uh, let's say for example, uh, you know, a founder comes in who is targeting the food market and, you know, while estimates show that it's a $500 million market, for example, and they say, you know, we'll expand into grocery next, that next and make it a two, $3 billion addressable market. Uh, you know, how would you think of this, right? When they say that the future expansion will increase the market size. Uh, would love to get your thoughts. On yeah, that. I think the first market makes or breaks the company, man. So for early stage companies, so you have to pick the market which has enough potential, right? And uh, right. obviously, in a seed stage, if it's a team bet and the team wants to navigate three, four things, that's different. But if mm -hmm. someone's clear on their market and that market is not large, and they say, "I have to, go, I have to now, I'll prove this in India and then go to five other countries," and only then it'll become then this becomes India's 100 million, then this five other countries will make it a billion. Those are more, uh, I think it's a big leap of faith. I find it tough to take, like meaning, uh, it's, it's, I find it as in, it's tougher for that, uh, those kind of companies to expand. I'd rather focus on the first market, which well, if it's 500 million, it's fine, but let's go really dominate that, then figure out how do we go from that, right? So, uh, and uh, like, that's probably a more reasonable approach. 
So it's uh, don't don't over. Uh, yeah, I keep it simple there. So first market needs to be large enough. Yeah. Akshat, answers awesome. your question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is Hari here. Uh, does your yeah, yes, approach change when you are looking at a B two B market or where a company is solving you know, for something in the B two B space? Because I, I would imagine that the data is far more sparse in B two B areas than it is in consumer. Every area is sparse man in India. Like so, there's no area where you'll get a lot of data. It's you go look at the offline and and you go look at what's the proxies, the same methodology we talked about. Margin structures you can figure it out by doing first of all industry uh, like there's some reports, but more importantly doing calls. Using that you have to put together your best estimate. And uh, the way to normalize is don't don't optimize for GMV like uh, that. Like in B2B GMV could be super big. But uh, to Anand's earlier point, the actual take rates will be lower, and then contribution margins because of that will be even lower. So if you take e-commerce, it's a four percent EBITDA business, whereas in, in uh, here it could be even lower. It could be one two percent. So you have to really, I'm talking from GMB to that. So really understand the profit pools available over time, and 25, 40 times profit, uh, which means 25 million of profit, is it possible with 10 percent market penetration? Could be a normalizing yeah. thing. Yeah. I also want to make a point here that you know, in any market, even if in US, right, availability of high quality market size data usually should mean that you are too late in the market. I mean, you as a early stage fund, you have to sort of you know work with incomplete uh, or or inadequate information because that's your edge. You want to predict things and they are not very clear to everybody, right? If you want to be the first company, you you have to judge because you know. Let's say that you wait in B two B market, you wait for a lot of granular GST data and all of that. You know why will somebody do that data and why will somebody cover that sector and why will so a lot of people do a lot of primary research and all because it's a large market, right? You want to be the first one to discover a large market. In fact, I would say that you know while everybody like we are not reactive only, right? As a VC. We have to say, okay, I am investing in a good team, but I am also the first one to discover a large market. Right? I mean, if you, it's a very important case of black box, right? I mean, like black box was a discovery when nobody even thought that there will be any adoption in B two B, right? I mean, these people who own two trucks, three trucks, one truck, I mean, like how likely are they to come to a marketplace, right? Very unlikely. And at that time, broadly, you know, I mean, there is a market size that India is like a billion plus country, right? We we all know that, so. So we have to have trucks, we have to have bikes and vehicles. That market data is known. Anything more granular, you have to sort of you know take a leap of faith only. Yeah. On on that, I have well, a question, Anand. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling us, you know, once uh, that you already had this idea, very very similar to Black Buck, right? Like you you had it in your thesis, right? One uh, very important uh, thing I face a lot of times is that, you know, you, you build this thesis with a lot of, and, and, you know, you build this whole thought process. Sometimes it's, it's about finding that exact right team because there could be multiple teams attempting that experiment and, uh, you know, there could be two really solid teams and it's, it's mad difficult to kind of make a choice. Have, have you fallen into a bucket like that? And if you, you know, if you, yeah, yeah. Like that. no, it's all the time. I don't know which Anand you asked both all of us. I'm time. sure have lots of, yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> so invariably there's a founder market fit, man. So I'm sure you've heard this term and all that. You'll have to have a sense for uh, this, this founder. Does he really know the space? Are they really married to that space? Is, are they doing it just because, it's uh, it's exciting at that time or will they stick it out because any good company is going to take five ten years to build right so and then do they really smell and breathe that space and yeah can uh, can last that right that's a gut call and if you're it's tough to pick who's uh, who's the best if you think they are one of the best also, you have the to challenge listen. also is that you can only pick one right so you will even if yeah. you think you pick the best you still can go wrong right i mean i'll give an example a very good example so when I was thinking of, you know, what will Indians do on a smartphone, social media was one. We've done 15 companies in social media so far, social media style. But gaming was another thesis that I had, right? a top-down thesis. I sort of missed MPL, right, because of whatever low allocation or whatever. And since then, I mean, I was so upset with missing MPL that I haven't been able to do a second company, right? I mean, so we have zero gaming companies today. What do you do? <laughs> 
so this is like the, my thesis was was two years before three years before MPL was formed. Like since to the, around the time of Sherchat, I was thinking of a gaming company, but haven't been able to do it. Right? So yeah, I mean you you face these challenges. Right? Uh, you might like a team and you might lose or you find the wrong team, but but that's our business, right? I think your mind has to be overworking and you have to have multiple theses running in your brain so that the moment you spot you, you don't spend too much time of dilly dallying, right? But everything can't also be top down. I'd say that, you know, we can't th have thesis for every market. We have to be open. So while I have some positive thesis, I don't have negative thesis. That's what I've learned. I mean, earlier I used to have a lot of negative thesis also. If this will not work, this will, I don't have a negative list now at least. That has helped me to sort of be reactive also. You can't always be like uh, running with a few theses in the mind. You, you have to be open to, to evaluate something new also. That's a new thing for me to pick up. No negative thesis. That's a good thing. Anand, way to uh, very important learning yeah. after losing a lot of good yeah, opportunities. Yeah. No negative yeah. thesis is, is, is my learning for last two years only actually. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Yeah. Yeah. I have no, not no, thought actually, what? Deeply. No negative thesis is also a sort of, you know, your, your uh, investment committee temperament. If you repeat enough times, people at least take a serious look, right? Because we want the shortcut to, to saying no. Negative thesis is out, right? We don't want to think about it. Mm. Good point. Yeah. Any other last question or we're already over time. So I'm, I'm okay. Take one. Anand, Anand you also, you. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. also look yeah. at when you look at a market size, do you look at the interest of global funds in, in that kind of a space or that size of the company, you know, do you do that? Invariably we, yeah. Fund? So the uh, like at the seed stage, it's very tough uh, to know uh, which ones. Uh, but sometimes, like for example, when we did taxi for sure, Uber was a was an investment that had happened, but it wasn't well known, right? Yeah. Same with when we did Swiggy 2015. Elema was there actually, maybe that gave me a little bit of comfort in China, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that was doing a similar model. Like yeah. see, like I do. It's not so much about uh, VCs, it's about has this model worked anywhere, right? Yeah. Gives some some comfort. China that way can be a you know preview for us, right? So it's a yeah. movie that's already run, so that way it can be uh, helpful. So I I do make trips there on a periodic basis. I'm not saying everything that works there will work here, but uh, anywhere like so or, or so that helps. But uh, trying to figure out if investors will invest. Uh, makes it tough. That's why the ma market size is a good proxy. I've realized that if the market is not a uh, market where it can, you can create a, over time, if things work out, a uh, 5 billion plus outcome, you probably are going to limit the number of large my, funds. My, my question was that, do you think yeah. that will other investors, larger investors view the market the same way I am viewing it? That's my question. Like that I had you can help, help, them. help them understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a big finish? problem about this in share chat that you know people thought that this is a tiny market won't work, you know there are no ad dollars, and uh, the company sort of you know did not raise like great rounds and all of that. I mean, uh, uh, so initially it was difficult to convince, but uh, eventually of course you know like uh, it picked up, but first two years were tough to convince people. That this is a market. Yeah, enough of those. Correct. Same with SaaS, Indian SaaS companies going global. Yeah. Like until for the longest time, not too many people are looking now. Yeah. So, but that's the nature of our business, Anand. So, like, <laughs> we'll have to keep knocking at doors. To yeah. develop no, no, I agree. In fact, I have, yeah. I have yeah. sort of removed that as a constraint now, saying that it's my job to convince. But if I am convinced, I'm convinced, right? I mean, like, yeah, can't yeah. depend that's too much on the next approach. round. Yeah. Next round might be worth thinking through the immediate next, yeah, immediate round. next round. I agree. That I agree. Yeah. But uh, but further on, like it depends on execution. So many things that if yeah. it's a decent enough market opportunity, people, uh, no, good founders will good always. Point, we, we, one yeah. has to solve the next round at least the first ten million or twenty million. That much you have to have in mind. Okay, who will who else will believe and why will they believe and uh, how likely are they already in competition? Are they in a, something adjacent to the competition? You have to work that out. That's yeah. important. Cool.
Anything Super, else? Anand. This was a pleasure, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, same uh, here. Yeah. We we will we will hold you on the discussion on marketplaces. So <laughs> this session, yeah. uh, uh, Piyush of uh, Vertex, he took a special session on SaaS in the sector. I think you know B two B B two B marketplaces are again a new sort of new area. I mean, black box has been around, and now we have a few other industrial goods marketplaces. We have a Zetwork. But I think that that's a that's a large, large overall large opportunity. I think Priyank is your man, Anand. Huh? Yeah, he's the he, Priyank, Priyank yeah. is the guy who originally <laughs> said marketplace is the way to go in 2013. Wow. Then he did a whole thesis around that, and and uh, we've invested in a lot of those. Yeah, like he was ahead of his time. <laughs> which is good. Yeah, which is good. We, yeah. we will. Priyank yeah. is there. Priyank yeah. has taken on a break. So yeah, he also in Zetwork. Yeah, Zetwork yeah. also he's on the board. Yeah, right, sure. Yeah. Sabbatical, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Priyank. In fact, so Priyank and Ritesh were sort of, you know, uh, very helpful in getting this off the ground, the whole program. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great. Pleasure, Anand. Okay. Uh, awesome. Thank, thank you. you See you. See you, everyone. Yeah, bye bye. bye.